I would like first to thank the organizers uh, of the conference and uh, for uh, also the others uh, attending the presentation. The paper presents the role of architectural design or research by design in mediating between citizenship and city, that is, between political conceptions of citizenship and cultural perceptions of the city. It is discussed through master plan thesis projects conducted by Palestinian architecture students through their study in the Faculty of Architecture and Town Planning at the Technion Institute uh, Haifa, Israel. As a minority facing inequalities and ethnic discrimination, the students in the faculty invested much of their thinking and practicing in questioning the citizenship institution and the right to city in conflict. As a representative example, I focus th this talk on two main projects, this, uh, which is discussed citizenship. The first one is Balata refugee camps in the West Bank, and the other one is El Isawi neighborhood in East Jerusalem. Both cases highly figure the ways inhabitants that denied of national citizenship rights continue struggling and retaining the privileges and rights of urban citizenship. To understand the interfaces between architecture and citizenship, I will discuss first the conceptual framework of the Palestinian citizenship with the specific historical context. Then, I will turn to design in order to express the way students grapple with the historical complexities between citizenship and the city. So first I will uh, discuss the denial of national citizenship and the formation of, uh, the, of the relation between camp and city. Discussing the Israeli-Palestinian conflict through the prism of urban citizenship bring together two concepts, the right to the city and the Palestinian rights of return. During the 1948 Arab-Israeli war, around 750,000 Palestinians became refugees hosted in the neighboring Arab countries and only about 150,000 Palestinians remained as minority in the newly established state of Israel to become two decades later citizens. The Palestinian refugees clung stubbornly to the right of return embedded in the UN Resolution 1943 from 11 December 1948. Of the 750,000 refugees, around 400,000 arrived the West Bank under Jordanian control and were settled in 21 camps adjacent to the main cities and entrusted uh, in, uh, to the United Nations Relief and Work Agency for Palestinian refugees in the Middle East, UNRWA. Jordan annexed the West Bank and extended Jordanian citizenship to Palestinians there. This took new dimension when Israel occupied the West Bank in 1967 and annexed only East Jerusalem but continued to deprive the Palestinian refugees and locals from citizenship rights. Although the city's permanent residents and the refugees were rendered non-citizens by Israel, the two groups found themselves in markedly different material circumstances when the dust settled. The refugee camps were visibly set apart from the city and the refugees' makeshift shelters were visibly flimsier than even the poorest quarters of the city. Unlike the makeshift refugee camps operated by UNRWA, the Palestinian cities had an established history of elective, elective municipal administration and property ownership. The differentiations of urban life, economic status, and class of the non-citizens compel us to re revisit the notion of the right of the city coined by Henry Lefebvre in 1968 as an integral of the broader political framework the city finds itself in. Now, refugees, Palestinians living in cities and villages all had, to varying degrees, the right to participate in civic rights and of appropriation that were denied from the refugees themselves. If the heart of the Palestinian struggle is in the city because refugees lost their rights to the city, if it's indeed the prime historical cradle of civic resistance and mobilization, as is seen uh, very clearly show us, then they are supposed to hold the way their effect on the formation of political identity in Palestine. In the Palestinian context, however, the camp, rather than the city, was the cradle of Palestinian nationalism. Disconnected from the social networks of their neighboring area and told to wait in miserable camps until their return is assured, refugees fulfilled a foundational political role in Palestinian nationalism. 
the refugees embodied the state of crisis to which the nationalist vision addressed itself and were reminders that the cause of Palestinian liberation was a fight for the universally recognized right of refugees, these refugees to return to their homes. The tendency to describe the refugee camps as an urban entity stands in its own as a symbol for resistance and liberation without taking the risk to argue the preperceptions of the right to keep the camp distinct from the city is another way to deprive the agency of the non-citizens and affect their political conditions. As appealing as these studies are, we must keep in mind that there is a significant difference between access to civil rights in the host countries as a mean for integration and the top-down imposition of assimilation as forced tautin, that is, forced resettlement. The capitulations on the refugees' right to return by the Palestinian national leadership during the Oslo Accords, as several researchers argue, impelled the refugees to stand up and claim their right. But I'm asking, what happens when one turns to special configuration of the rights and the materiality of the camp city distinctions? What can this teach us about the dynamics of citizenship in the city and their impact on the conflict itself? Such questions urge us refining the methodological inquiry and architectural disciplinary toolkit in approaching city and citizenship enmeshed in politics and power. Design, as I argue, is an important and complementary mood to decenter the theoretical confines imposed by the paradigm of power. The Palestinian minorities architectural students who experienced the loss of the city and refracted citizenships are agents in design narrowly think that rethink that it has been dubbed the world's most interactable conflict. Design has the power to face and deal with the uncertainty of conditions and value conflict through making, and this could be achieved through education. So first I will discuss the Balata refugee camps. The Balata project is a prominent example to the way that the students Nur Jabarin deals with the distinct tension of the city and the camp. Balata refugee camp is adjacent to Nablus city and considered the biggest Palestinian camp in the West Bank. Over the years and under, under UNRWA's management, the camp has developed vertically and horizontally to become one of the densest Palestinian camp. The physical urban attachments has not transformed the legally rights detachment between the camp and the city. Conducting in-depth interviews with the camp residents, Jabarin mapped the spaces of daily suffer, alienation, and discrimination they face uh, by Nablus locals. In addition, she drew the refugees' critical claim to dwell the city and to preserve the national project by preserving, first of all, the city itself. The refugees, as Jabarin argued, stressed the real threat exists in Israeli the devastation of the socio-political and physical space and the continuous ruination mechanisms acted against the Nablus city and its architectural heritage. In David Harvey's definition to the right to the city, one could refer to the refugees' claim as well to build a common space of resistance to occupation by, I quote, exercising of a common power to reshape the process of urbanization, end of quote. In order to save the city, Palestinian needs to overcome the status and class divisions between the refugees and locals. Israel herbicidal practices at the project on its are highly marked in the city's urban fabric and are constantly transforming its morphology. The first intifada in 1987 and the second intifada lasted between 2002 and 2005 mainly, brought to large part of the city to be destroyed. The city Old Alice turned to be, as the Palestinians described them, the castle of res resistance and the mountain of fire. More than 40% of the city's private and public properties, including factories, home, and leisure spaces, have been abandoned. The devastated condition, as Jabarin argues, not only made the camp as permanent evidence to the Nakba and the loss of the rights, but also the city itself became its testimony to the same catastrophe. If one treats both spaces as livable evidence to the same violence, then the achievement of the civic rights for the refugees in the city would ensure their daily dignity and save the city as a common. The project then offered to preserve the camp 
as a historical active museum of embedment of national and political public space while transforming the city to livable productive space. It documented and analyzed and designed the dominant objects that render the history of the camps. It drew the possibilities to refugees to reside in the abandoned properties and to redevelop the local industry, mainly expressed in the historical savan factories that were shut down as a result of the occupation. In addition, the project sug suggested strengthening the existing infrastructure allow further building uh, of housing. By designing the camp and city relation, Jabarin expressed the ways of practicing the right instead of accepting it as granted demand. The second project I will discuss is the Ilasawiyi neighborhood. The, uh, the Ilasawiyi neighborhood of North Side focused on the neighborhood Ilasawiyi in East Jerusalem. Before the Israeli 1967 unification, of East and West Jerusalem, Ilaisawihi was developed as a small village where its residents enjoyed the Jordanian citizenship. The annexation turned the village to marginal neighborhood within the city's municipality borders and cut it from its agricultural lands that were confiscated by Israeli government to extend the settler projects as to build national institutions. Ilaisawiyi residents, as most of the Palestinians in East Jerusalem were granted a permanent residency without ensuring them a national citizenship. Projects, Nur Said pointed out four main special periods shaping Ilaisawiyi built environment the urban context, the tribal system, the natural sharp topography, and the Israeli military daily presence in the neighborhood. The urban context reflected the fact that Ilaisawiyi was physically detached from the rest of the Palestinian neighborhoods to become an enclave surrounded by main road, monumental institution, and national park. The tribal conne uh, connections also played a critical tool in the division of the neighborhood to 12 uh, nuclei socially separated. The topography and the sharp elevation differences which formed steep slopes made the circulation and movement very difficult. The fourth and the dreadful parallel is the presence of the Israeli soldiers in the neighborhood. These soldiers become frequent dwellers of locals' homes, break into their rooms, climb in the rooftops, and inhabit the neighborhood's alleys, all in the name of security. Apart from national and urban citizenship, as from neglecting infrastructure and absence of basically public spaces and children's playground, the residents found themselves struggling to their daily survive and searching for alternative solutions to improve their daily conditions. The special transform, uh, transformation of the neighborhood was to informal uh, buildings. Side inspired from Rim Kula's elements projects and focused on the materiality of the architectural elements such as balconies, stairs, roofs, walls, courtyards, etc. to develop a flexible architecture that provide the residents with the missing public spaces and allow the creation common spaces of defense against the military attack. Stairs and pumps for, uh, for hair, for example, were used to connect several roofs together and transform it to one big courtyard. Through them, Said also succeeded to overcome the topographical differences and to connect between different functions as also between tribes that are separated. The military strategy of walking through the exploded inner walls to arrest Palestinians were adapted by Said to create continuous corridors and to build a new inner movement network in service of the residents. The corridors, for example, allow children to arrive to their schools they exist in the other side of the neighborhood safely. It connected between the mosques and the public institutions that could function as a shelter uh, for community defense space. So rethinking and practicing the architecture elements allow Eli Sawi's non-citizens their agency in making their city. To conclude, the research by design projects is a critical architecture mode allow minorities and oppressed to claim the right to city as also to be cultural producers of knowledge, thinkers and makers of architecture as a civilian act. As I demonstrated, minority students took the civilian 
discourse and its architectural embodiment most seriously and who very successfully grappled with the issue of what their disciplinary action meant for the future of the Palestinians and their freedom. They believed in their agency to bring topics specific to their experience into the political scene and take responsibility in shaping the conflict. Thank you for listening.